Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From mummified armor-plated plant eaters to a well-preserved T-Rex investigated by the FBI, here are 10 of the most amazing fossil discoveries ever. Number 10. Notosaur Fossil One of the most amazing fossil finds in history was the Notosaur. This armor-plated plant eater lived about 110 million years ago and is one of the best preserved dinosaur heads ever. Most fossils are fragments of bone and teeth, but this has the actual skin and armor of the animal from the head to around the hip. Found by mine workers in Canada in 2011 that were drilling for crude oil, they saw big brown rocks that looked like ribs but they had no idea that it was a dinosaur. Six years later, the dinosaur has been cleaned and protected and looks almost like it would have looked way back when. It is located at the Royal Tyrrell Museum and it is their pride and joy. Have any of you seen it in real life? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. Mosquito in Amber what if we found a well-preserved ancient mosquito preserved in amber, just like in Jurassic Park? Could we bring dinosaurs back? This concept is a fascinating one as in the movie, dino blood was extracted from the mosquito to create dinosaurs in the present. But such a thing wouldn't be possible in real life, right? Right? Most likely not. However, a mosquito fossil with blood in it was found in 2013 in the state of Montana, giving hope to movie watchers everywhere. The crazy thing is, this shale rock fossil had actually been discovered in the 1980s. A student slash amateur fossil collector kept it in his house and forgot about it. If an eagle-eyed biochemist hadn't been on the case, we may never have found this extraordinary 46 million year old specimen. Experts got even more excited when they realized it still had blood in its system. One thing they do know is that it isn't dinosaur blood. Sorry Jurassic Park fans. DNA only lasts around half a century before degrading. As for what animal the blood was sucked out from, it's a mystery. Still, blood from millions of years ago is pretty cool regardless. Number 8. Archaeopteryx Archaeopteryx is the oldest known bird from the late Jurassic period. This creature is extremely important as it is the link between dinosaurs and birds. The discovery of this fossil in Germany in 1860 is sometimes referred to as the original bird or the first bird. However, that is not exactly the case. But it was a major stepping stone in paleontology as it had feathers, wings, and bones that were hollow like a bird, but teeth, legs, and a bony tail just like a small dinosaur. The name translates as ancient wing. Further digging the following year revealed a headless skeleton. Since then, about 11 to 12 Archaeopteryx fossils have been found. The stepping stone critter dates back to 150 million years ago to the late Jurassic period. It weighed up to 2.2 pounds and was the size of a raven, with broad rounded wings and a long tail which grew up to 50 centimeters. So could it fly? The flying dino was apparently a flapper as it flew short distances rather than soaring majestically like a pterodactyl. It was a carnivore and also had reptilian teeth, so it could grab onto its prey. Ouch! Imagine a bird flying around with sharp teeth! The most complete skeleton is the Berlin specimen that was discovered in 1874-75 in Germany by a farmer. This one actually had an intact head and eventually made its way to the Humboldt Museum where it remains today. Other recent discoveries in China of similar fossilized creatures, especially the Chiaotingya Zengi, continue to fill in the puzzle of bird-like dinosaurs, now known as Deinonychosauria. Say that three times fast. Number 7. Diplodocus what makes the Diplodocus so amazing is that we know a lot about it. In the mysterious world of fossils, that's a big deal. It was first discovered in 1877, and the name Diplodocus means double beam. That's in reference to the interesting shape of the bones in its tail. Since then, casts of whole skeletons were donated to the public by steel baron Andrew Carnegie. It lived in the late Jurassic period around 150 million years ago, and you couldn't fail to miss it back then. With its long neck and tail, it measured 53 meters in total. Because its front legs are shorter, it's believed the Diplodocus ate low-lying food, specifically plants like shrubs. This large dinosaur has a reputation for being slow and chubby, but only one of those seems to be right. In comparison to other sauropods, they're pretty slender at around 40,000 pounds. However, the brain was somewhat small. You didn't want to mess with it though, as experts think that long, powerful tail could have been used as a weapon. You can get some Diplodocus vertebrae for $6,450. What do you think? Worth it? Number 6. 
Dueling Dinosaurs In 2006, cowboy and rancher Clayton Phipps and his friend Mark Eatman, known as the Dino Cowboy, went out looking for dinosaur bones in Montana. Montana is rich in dinosaur fossils, and they can be worth a lot. Whenever the men weren't doing ranch work, they were out looking for fossils and started going to trade shows and selling to museums and private collectors. So then in 2006, they made the discovery of a lifetime. In a hillside, they found not one, but two dinosaurs locked in what looked like a fight to the death. There was a 22-foot-long theropod, perhaps a T-Rex, and a 28-foot-long ceratopsian from 66 million years ago. They are so well-preserved that they are almost mummies instead of fossils, and there could be soft tissue inside. Question now is, who owns the fossil? It's hard to say. There are the ranchers who found it, the landowners who signed off, a case of Murray v. BEJ Minerals LLC which deals with who owns what's on top of the land versus what's beneath it, all kinds of confusion, and a lot of money to be made for what is perhaps the greatest fossil ever discovered. Not many have seen it, and apparently they still haven't been fully excavated from the rock and cleaned out or put on display, but that information's a little sketchy. The latest news I could find is that Clayton Phipps couldn't really tell anyone where it is, just that they are at an American museum. But other museums, such as the Smithsonian, argue that unless they share the exact location and make it available to the public for viewing and studying, the find is basically useless, and they will not pay the $15 million that they are asking for. Apparently, the dueling dinosaurs themselves went to auction in 2013 at Bonhams in New York, but no bid met the reserve price of $6 million. Confusing, I know, but these kinds of finds bring a lot of excitement. And drama! Number 5. Hadrosaurus this monster fossil is impressive, but somewhat controversial. You may not associate somewhere like New Jersey with dinosaurs, but the strange truth is the state has its own dino, the Hadrosaurus, which reportedly means bulky lizard. Not a bad way to refer to one of these guys. Its bones were discovered by accident when a pit was being dug in New Jersey in 1838. However, for some reason, they weren't excavated for another 20 years. The creature, which was 10 meters long and 8,000 pounds, has been traced back to the late Cretaceous period, 84 to 70 million years ago. What's complicated about the find is that the skeleton doesn't have a head. Experts have pieced together what the Hadrosaurus may have been like due to its similarities with the Gryposaurus. The Gryposaurus moved in herds and was an herbivore, so the Hadrosaurus is thought to have been that way also. There isn't a head, but teeth have been found which appear to back this up. Yet some theorize that this dino isn't a separate animal because all the pieces of the puzzle haven't been found. Never mind, Hadrosaurus. We believe in you. Number 4. The Hobbit Not all fossils are of dinosaurs, as this extraordinary collection of ancient human fossils demonstrates. Back in the early 90s, the remains of nine individuals were found and excavated in a cave on the island of Flores, Indonesia. Named Homo floresiensis, they were like humans, only different in one important aspect, size. The ancient people were all approximately one meter or three feet in height. This led experts to dub them hobbits. Recreations have been made of what they might have looked like. For example, one was a female 30 years old. However, when it comes to when these so-called hobbits date back to, no one exactly knows. Their fossils were found in a complicated mix of cave layers that have grown over time, so working it all out is tough. Estimates of the hobbits' ages have been revised over and over. The current thinking is that they are between 60 to 100,000 years old. Are they our ancestors, or were they a separate group made extinct by the development of modern humans? There appears to have been a general extinction in the area 50,000 years ago that affected various species. But what caused things to vanish off the map so dramatically? Quite the mystery. Number 3. Megalosaurus What was the first dinosaur fossil ever discovered? That was found in England in 1824 with the Great Lizard, or Megalosaurus. This was before the idea of a dinosaur was even invented, 18 years later. So as far as scientists were concerned, this was something new and kind of freaky. At first, they drew some conclusions from the fossil that weren't too accurate. For starters, they believed it walked on four legs. The find caused such a sensation that Charles Dickens referred to it in one of his novels, describing it waddling up a hill. However, it was established afterwards it walked on two legs. The Megalosaurus was 6 meters long and weighed 907 kilograms. Apparently, it was only a quarter of the size of a T-Rex. We know some stuff like that, but overall the Megalosaurus is still quite mysterious. 
Aside from it being the first dinosaur identified by science, the Megalosaurus dates back to the mid-Jurassic era 165 million years ago. Generally, we don't find a lot of fossils from that time. If you want to come face to face with this legendary creature, then visit Crystal Palace Park in London, where a four-legged, full-size sculpture is on display alongside other dino recreations. It isn't accurate, but it sure is impressive. Number 2. Lucy An amazing and game-changing fossil discovery was made in 1974, when Lucy was discovered in the Afar region of Ethiopia. Her real name is Australopithecus afarensis, but she was named Lucy after the Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which the scientists were playing on their tape deck at the time. She was in pieces which totaled up to 40% of a whole skeleton, a brilliant find for archaeologists. Lucy is thought to have been 12 years old, but why is she so significant? History had many gaps, and she provided a major insight into the link between apes and humans. At an estimated 3 million years old, she became the oldest known example of an ancient human or hominin at the time. And I do mean hominin, not hominid. Hominins are part of the family or larger group of primates called hominids and are a species of early human. Particular interest was paid to her human-like teeth and bipedal nature, or walking on two legs. Together with other examples, such as the famous Taung Child discovery of 1924, it showed further evidence of how man and womankind may have evolved through learning to walk the way we do today. Also, the scientist who spotted Lucy is called Donald Johansson. Coincidentally, Scarlett Johansson played a character inspired by Lucy in the movie of the same name. Number 1. Tyrannosaurus Sioux Tyrannosaurus Sioux is the largest and best-preserved T-Rex fossil ever found. Her real name is specimen FMNHPR2081, but Sue is catchier. She is also named after Sue Hendrickson, the woman who found her. The 80% complete Tyrannosaurus rex is one of the best discoveries ever and is now located at Chicago's Field Museum, but the story of the discovery is pretty complicated. Found in the Black Hills of South Dakota in 1990, its ownership was highly contentious. Paleontologist Peter Larson, owner of the Black Hills Institute of Geological Research, along with Sue Hendrickson and others, were out looking for fossils. They had paid the landowner, Maurice Williams, $5,000 to dig on his property. After spending weeks searching, Sue Hendrickson came upon some broken bones and vertebrae, the first pieces of Sue the T-Rex. The team spent the next few weeks carefully unearthing the skeleton, encased the bones in plaster, and then transferred them to the Black Hills Institute where they prepared them for display. Injuries found on some of the bones indicated that the T-Rex had been attacked and died from them. But before Larson and his team could celebrate their discovery, the excitement turned to outrage when federal agents arrived at the Institute and seized Sue, as well as all the records related to the T-Rex and other documents from the Black Hills Institute. The FBI agents indicated the team had stolen the T-Rex from federal land, and Maurice Williams, remember him, the landowner? He claimed that he had given them the rights to look, but that the actual dinosaur was his. He belonged to the Sioux Nation, part of the Indian Trust land, which made it more complicated. For 18 months, Sue remained locked up as the federal government gathered evidence against Larson and his team members, accusing them of stealing. To make an already sticky situation even worse, the institute had been under investigation for years for illegally taking fossils off public lands and selling them internationally to private collectors. In the end, 153 charges were laid against Peter Larson and five others on his team. He spent 18 months in prison. A judge awarded ownership of the dinosaur to Williams, who auctioned off the skeleton through Sotheby's. It sold for $7.6 million. Larson still runs the Black Hills Institute of Geological Research in South Dakota. He and his team also found an additional 10 partial Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons. Besides all of this, Sue the Dinosaur has given us an enormous amount of information. Smithsonian Magazine says that if you look for her official name, the FMNH one, you will find tons of info regarding aging, biomechanics, and much, much more. Thanks for watching! Which one did you like the most? Do you collect fossils? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!